Okay, so I'm just going to get right into the meat of this topic. I love reading fables. If you weren't paying attention in 10th grade English, a fable is a short story usually with talking animals that have a moral at the end of them. A good way to remember is that the word fable starts with an F and so does furries. So... Some examples of a fable you might have heard are the tortoise and the hare, um, Humpty Dumpty, Pacific Rim, and the autobiography of Hillary Clinton. This one's a fable because the main character's a bit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Humpty Dumpty's not a fable. So there's this guy named Aesop, and he's best known for creating a bunch of fables. He's written over 655, and seriously, I don't know why for some reason we can't find the exact number. How many fables has he written? Over 655! Oh, so... 656? Like, what's the range here? Unfortunately, he has died, so we won't be writing any more fables. So why can't we get the exact number? Like, what the heck, guys? And he also had a very strong no-photo policy, so no pictures of him were ever taken. Because he was born around 500 BC. I don't even think he knew what a camera was, so... Here we go, this is, this is what he supposedly looked like. And what I like most about fables is that the wording is so like Shakespearean and old-timey and it makes you feel like you're smart for reading these short paragraph long stories and even better they have a moral at the end of them so once you're done reading you're like oh man that was deep like every single fable can end with one character dropping a microphone like the whole story is just build up to that one moral moment. Okay, so I'm going to read some of my favorite fables to you guys. These aren't, I'm not going to read them how Aesop wrote them though, because he had so many unnecessary smart sounding words when really all of his fables could be shortened down to like three sentences. So here we go, Aesop's fables in my own words. <clears throat> Belling the cat. So there's these mice that get together and they're trying to come up with a plan to get this cat to stop killing them. And one mouse is like, oh, we could put a bell around the cat, you know? So now now we could hear it or something. And this other mouse is like, yeah, all right, yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Who's going to put the bell on? <laughs> okay, so this one's kind of actually stupid. I don't really know what the moral is. Like, maybe no one wants to be the person to sacrifice themselves for the good of humanity or my sanity or... Okay, here's my version of the rest of that story. So after the mouse said that, the other mouse goes, oh, geez, other mouse, you're right. I didn't think of that. Well, I guess I say we all grab our toothpicks and kill the cat. You know, at least that ending made sense. A bell? Pfft. How about you poison it? Or like move somewhere where there's not a cat in the first place. The horse and the groom. So there's this horse and a groom, which is not the wedding kind. It's an actual groomer who just calls himself a groom. So this groom spends all this time brushing the horse and making it look pretty. And he also takes some of the horse's oats and sells it for extra cash. Okay, stop right there. Aren't oats supposed to be really cheap? Isn't that a thing? Okay, so the horse is getting malnourished and says, you know, you should really stop worrying about brushing me and more about feeding me. Man, that's deep, I, I think. The moral is, don't steal your horse's oats. Especially if it talks, like you will never hear the end of it. The farmer with the goose with the golden eggs. So there's this farmer and he somehow gets a goose that lays golden eggs. And now you might be thinking, what's with all these gooses that like golden eggs? Jack and the Beanstalk did it. The Simpleton Brothers did it. Well, did you know that this is the very first time a goose laying golden eggs has ever appeared in writing? I actually don't know if that's true. I made it up. I mean, it might be true. I don't know. It was 500 BC, you guys. It was a long time ago. And the goose only lays one egg a day. And the farmer gets greedy and wants more eggs. So he thinks, oh, I bet all the eggs are inside the goose. So he chops up the goose and guess what? There's only more goose parts in there, not eggs. Okay, so the moral, know how basic things work, especially if you're a farmer and you don't know how geese work, or at least be close friends with someone who knows this. Hey man, I, I don't think that's how geese work. I mean, I get how you might think this is a magic goose because everything about this is physically impossible, but we could already live pretty decent lives with just one egg a day. Like, we're already in the top 1% now. How can a goose carry around a golden egg inside of itself? Do you know how heavy gold is? If there's solid gold, can a goose ever have babies? This seems like an evolutionary dead end to me. The bat and the weasels. So there once was this bat and he fell somehow. Aesop never really says how it fell. It's a bat. It can fly. Okay, so the bat gets caught by a weasel. Like, one of these things? Okay, so you're saying that a bat gets caught by a weasel because he fell. 
Whatever, okay. So the weasel says, I am an enemy to all birds, and I'm going to eat you. And the bat goes, I I'm not a bird, I'm a mouse. Oh, what are these things that look like wings? Oh, these? Uh, that's my blanket because I'm cold. Okay, that part wasn't in the story. So the weasel lets him go, but then it happens again with a different weasel, and this weasel says, I am an enemy to mice, and I'm going to eat you. And the bat goes, oh, tiny weasel, but I'm not a mouse. I'm a bird. And then he lets him go. Again. Sometimes Aesop wrote the moral you're supposed to take at the end. He did it with this one, and the moral forbatim is, look and see which way the wind blows before you commit yourself. So are you saying to follow the crowd? Like, go with the flow? That's not really good moral, Aesop. Also, why didn't the bat just say, I'm a bat, losers, and I can fly later? It's also teaching you to make up lies on the spot that contradict your first lie. That's how you get caught lying. Okay, so last fable, the fox and the crow. So this crow has a piece of cheese in her beak, and this fox comes along and is like, Oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, I just love your feathers. I wish I could just hear you sing. This crow is now very flattered, and she goes to sing, and then the cheese falls out of her mouth, and the fox eats it. And then the last line, this is beautiful, the fox says, You have a voice, madam. I see. What you want is wits. <laughs> Moral of the story, everyone wants to steal your cheese. Don't let your guard down for a second. That would be a good t-shirt design. Like, it would say, everyone wants to steal your cheese, and then it would have like a silhouette of a fox and a crow. Someone make that t-shirt. I'll buy it.